would like to humbly say thank you to everyone who has come to the Florida Maquis on Patreon. We are having a discussion here that allows us to take the gloves off, so to speak, and speak openly, honestly, and in a frank way about topics that probably would get us um, banned on YouTube. So if you're interested in having that kind of a conversation, I would recommend that you find us here. There's going to be a link at the end of the video that will give you the ability to do that. Um, for any amount, um, as low as a dollar, there will be posts here that will not be available on YouTube, but if you want to get your security clearance and go up to five dollars, you will be able to take advantage of the training that we're doing. Uh, psychological operations training that gives you an edge. Um, just about everything you read these days or see in the media is a form of information warfare. And without the tools to understand what's being done to you, you will kind of end up with the rest of the herd, so to speak. So this is something I'm hoping my audience will take advantage of so that we can be informed and we can understand what's happening and see it for ourselves. Um, at the $10 level, here on the right, you get uh, advanced training, and that's going to be starting here in June. At the $15 level, I start to, once I see a group of people becoming uh, trained, you're going to start getting um, assignments, for lack of a better term, to conduct white hat, I guess you would also call it red pill, operations using military level psychological operations in your own life. You get to the $20 level here on the right, and it's a roundtable access division. What this does is it gives you tactics to use if you are a business owner, if you are someone who has access to uh, advertising, um, if you employ people, you can take these techniques and you can affect the way that your employees and your customers operate and interact with your business. At the $50 level, and we do already have some folks here, this is something where I'm going to start um, revealing tactics used to affect elections and to affect politics in the region, um, your region specifically, if you want to. Uh, the military has been doing this for many, many, many years around the world. And once you get access to this information, you'll understand more clearly what uh, has happened in the Middle East and here also in South America and other areas, Africa and Europe as well. This particular video here that is uh, just happened to scroll up to, it talks about the issue in Parkland and it gives you an insight into the difference between North American left-wing politics and South American left-wing politics. It's very, very different. Um, there are all sorts of videos that we have done this psychological operation video here talks about things that get conducted right in plain sight. And we talk about this young lady right here. Her name is Heather Nauert. And um, I think once you understand where she has come from and what she has been able to accomplish, you'll see the power of psychological operation. So without any further ado, um, like I said, Florida Maquis without an R, M-A-Q-U-I-S. Um, on Patreon. Would love to have you. Love to have you be part of the conversation. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I have the best audience, most intelligent, informed audience on YouTube, bar none. But with, we are going to talk today about a mistake that I made, actually. I know a lot of you um, think that I'm the type that doesn't admit them, but I do. I put out a poll 14 hours ago and I forgot to include a very specific piece of information. These polls are hypothetical. And some of you were under the impression that this poll was based on an actual event. It was based on events that happened that were like it, but not an actual event involving the USS Arleigh Burke. And I do apologize for not, or forgetting, I should say, to put the little parentheses, hypothetical at the end of the poll here. But I think it's a great place to start for the video today because in this poll, I'm seeing some information that I am still trying to process. The poll states this, that one of our naval assets, the Arleigh Burke, is 
targeted and sunk by a Chinese silkworm missile. The asset has strayed into territorial waters of the Chinese. And even though the Chinese had attempted to warn it off three times, because of lack of training or lack of understanding of the particular ship, fatigue, or any of the other myriad reasons the Navy has given us for the problems that cost the lives of 17 sailors aboard the Fitzgerald and McCain, this ship doesn't respond and is engaged this way. So I asked, would the U.S. be justified in an armed retaliation? You know, 61% of you said no. That in this particular case, if this is the case where we strayed into these territorial waters and because of our lack of understanding of the uh, operation of this vessel, that we were probably the cause of the, the problem. But 40% of you said, yes, we should immediately target and sink the nearest Chinese naval vessel. Now, to me, that's... It, well, it's interesting is one word. The problem here, I think, is a misunderstanding of what's really going on in the region. And let me be really clear about this. What happened with the Fitzgerald and McCain was not an accident that happened during training. What happened with the Fitzgerald and McCain was an accident that happened during transit. They were just attempting to go from point A to point B. They weren't in a training scenario. They were not in a training evolution. The army equivalent of what happened with the Fitzgerald and McCain would be, let's say that there's a convoy that leaves from Fort Benning, Georgia, heading for Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And in the trip between those two army bases, vehicle accidents kill 17 soldiers. That is, in essence, what's happened here. And then the U.S. Army would come out and reveal that, oh yeah, some of these uh, drivers of these vehicles had never gotten a driver's license, or they had never driven a truck with that kind of a U-shifting uh, um standard transmission before, or they didn't understand how air brakes work, something like that. That would be what the army would be saying. Now that's all hypothetical, but that's the equivalent to what's being alleged with the Navy here. My question in the last video was this, if that's the case, if that is really the case, should we be conducting these risky freedom of navigation operations near military installations of other countries. Now, a lot of you took that to mean that I was trying to be some kind of pacifist or anti-American. Not it at all. Not it at all. In fact, let me show you the region we're talking about here. Now, this here is, I think I have, this is the Spratlys, and up here is the Paracels. Some of these are man-made, and some of these are not. But here's China. And here's their coast. I've heard two allegations from the viewers of my video. One is that 80% of the world's travel goes through this region. Yes, mostly with China. So I don't know that you could make the allegation that because there's military bases on some of these little islands, that that would be interfering with their trade. I don't think anyone has made the allegation that the Chinese Navy is sailing their assets out there and interfering and boarding and searching and seizing ships. That's not happening at all. Second of all, I've heard this allegation that a lot of you are saying, well, these aren't real islands, they're not real territory, so we don't have to recognize them. If that's the case, why is the U.S. Navy staying 15 miles away and stopping at that 15-mile line? If that's really the case. Because they are recognizing them as Chinese territory. Now, it doesn't, these islands being popped up out here, even the artificial ones, don't interfere with trade in the least. Because here's the, here's the Sprat lease, okay, and for it to interfere with trade, and like I said, these are not all man-made islands. These have been out here, you know, time in memoriam. And if you're going to be sailing through here with a cargo vessel of some kind, I'm sure there are dedicated routes and these islands don't interfere with that.
An artificial island or man-made island is an island that has been constructed by people rather than formed by natural means. Artificial islands may vary in size from small islets reclaimed solely to support a single pillar of a building or structure, to those that support entire communities and cities. That was creepy as shit. That was my Alexa that just decided to pipe in there. That's... wow. Okay, that's getting unplugged. <laughs> wow. That's real time there, guys. I, that was something that just happened. have no idea. I'm going to go ahead and leave that in the video. That's creepy. That's, wow, I think that Alexa is going to be turned into a hockey puck pretty quick here. Anyway, um, where were we? The Spratly and the Paracels. All right. So here's Hainan Island. I'm just going to measure a distance for you here. Let's see, we'll clear this off. It's not that far from China. 170 miles to there. And if you zoom out, you can see this is their territorial, you know, region. I hate to say this, guys, but if we're going to not be hypocritical, does the U.S have a base Diego Garcia down here south of India and if you go up here we have military presence all the way out here look how far that is from the United States we have Pearl in Hawaii we have the Marshall Islands look how far Bermuda is Let's see if I can find Bermuda here There it is. Bermuda is farther from the United States than these little islands are from China. And we have military presence all over through here. So I guess this would be my question. I'm sorry I kind of lost my train of thought with Alexa being creepy. But this is, I guess, what I wanted to, to ask. And I'll leave with this. I don't want to have this video go much longer. If you're talking about our allies in the region, where we have Indonesia and Malaysia and Vietnam and the Philippines, I brought up, this is global firepower, and these are the rankings. Okay. I think this would surprise a lot of you. Indonesia ranks higher than Israel in military power. They don't need our help this way they don't need us uh, being you know their policemen and I don't if somebody can find some kind of an article where you hear Indonesia asking us to do this I, I would like to see it I haven't been able to find it and Vietnam is top 20 so they perfectly have the ability themselves to deal with China so we will leave it there and there's a really great article out here about um, from Newsweek how our military commanders have said that it's going to cause a war if we continue this. And we're going to have to ask ourselves, is this what we want to do? Do we want to start a war over these little islands that, at least to this point, haven't really done anything to interfere with U.S. interests at all? So... We'll leave it there. Like I said, uh, Patreon, if you guys are interested, please um, do not hesitate. Would love to have you be part of the conversation. Like, share, subscribe.